One, two, one, two. All levels is good. All levels is good. All right, we in the hood. All right, so check this out. What's up, guys? Lockout men in the building, on the 30, in the truck, as always, coming at you with the good podcast and the good content. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. Come on in. Have a seat. Have a seat. Sit down. Sit down. Yo, in this episode of Lockout Man Podcast, there was a driver that reached out to me. Yes, sir. I send out all sorts of invites to you guys. So if you guys want to come on and and join the conversation with me, yo, hit me up in the hit me up in the Gmail. That's Lockout Man Podcast at gmail.com. All right. Lockout Man Podcast at gmail.com not lockoutmen.com i mean gmail.com is you got to add the podcast so that's how i know you guys is coming in for the podcast so if you guys want to come in and chop it up with me and let me know what you guys want to chop it up about yo i'll bring you on and we can have a sit down together that's that's what's up the true the true sit down you feel me so this gentleman right here sent the email out to me uh, y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? Yo, he sent the email out to me. It says, uh, it says right here, responding to your video. What's going on, bro? I'd like to set up some time to talk about Ferelli Transport and give you the truth about them. Yes, sir. If you want to come and give me the truth, bro, that's what we about to do in the next episode of Lockout Man Podcast. Let's get at it. What's up, y'all? Lockout man, back with another podcast interview for you guys. Yo, if you guys enjoying all these good interviews that I'm bringing you guys, like I said in the intro, y'all know what to do. Hit me up in the Gmail. That's Lockout Men Podcast. Don't forget to add the podcast at gmail.com. Today, I'm bringing you guys a gentleman that reached out to me to that that just want to chop it up with me. That's all. I, that's all y'all want to do y'all want to chop it up with me well he reached out to me today he was like yo bro i want to holler at you i was like what you got to holler at me about he was like yo i'll tell you when when he when i come on so he want to come on and talk about a company that he was with talk about his experiences that's what you guys want to do come on with it let me go ahead and welcome michael to the show is it is it michael or not uh michael Mike, man, Mike, man, what's going on, man? What's going on? How you feeling today? I'm pretty good, man. Raining like crazy. Uh, yeah, it is kind of. I'm looking outside the truck right now, man, and it's just it's it's nonstop. It's been nonstop all day. So where where you uh, where you calling me from, Mike? Where where you at right now? I'm in uh, South Jersey right now. You in where now? South Jersey. Oh, you in South Jersey? So you you up in the Northeast, man. See, I'm I'm not messing with the Northeast. Not messing with the Northeast. You you from the Northeast yeah. or you from the Northeast or you just doing a load up there? Um, right now I'm out here doing my reset. Mm -hmm. I'm from Jersey originally. Oh, okay. But okay. uh, I just moved to uh, Las Vegas last month. All right. Well, hold on right quick. Now, the the connection is kind of coming in and out, in and out. Let me see. Uh, I'm trying to make sure I got a good connection on this side. You got you got them bars looking good on it over there. Yeah. Oh, OK. Because it sounds like every time every time you talk, you come in. You like I said before, you, you don't have me on. No, you 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 talking to me through the phone. Right. You're not talking to me through Bluetooth or nothing like that. Right. Yeah, I'm on the phone. Um, actually, my Bluetooth did reconnect. Let me uh, take it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think I think that's what's what's coming in and out. Uh, is that better? Yeah, that's a lot better. There you go. Yeah, that's a lot better. I got uh, I got to turn you down too. <laughs> All right, man. For my <laughs> for my listeners that don't know who you are, man, why don't you go ahead and uh, give a little snapshot about yourself? Um, well, I basically uh. Graduated high school, was in the Marines. Um, eight years in Marines, did three tours, came back, got my CDL, and um, been driving trucks ever since. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you know what? It it is kind of sounded. It's like when you start when you start to talk, 
you sounding real good, and then it's just like it's not. It sounds like you drowning in the water or something like that. Maybe it's because yeah. See, maybe what all that rain. You know what? Let me let me let me see something right quick. Let me let me see something right quick. All right, I'm about to disconnect and call you on the other line right quick. So hold tight. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. Sorry about that. I had to take a little technical difficulty right quick, man. You know, had to had to get him to come in real clear because as y'all heard before, it sounded like he was drowning, right? We got to get him back up on dry land. <laughs> all right, Mike. All right, yeah, Mike. Yeah. So, like like I said, man, uh, uh, for like I said before, for the listeners that don't know, go ahead and give a snapshot about yourself again. All right. So, yeah, I graduated high school, mm-hmm. went Straight to the Marine Corps. Uh, the eight years on the Marine, the three tours. Mm-hmm. Um, got out the Marines, decided to drive a truck. Been all around the world, so might as well go see the rest, go see the country and defend them while I'm at it. So, okay, okay, that's what's up. So you, so truck driving, you, you learned, you got your CDLs while you was in, uh, in the service. And by the way, man. Nah, nah. By the way, man, thank you, thank you for your service, man. I I do appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, you know, going out there, uh, doing your due diligence for us to enjoy what we have right now, man. And thank you for being on this. Uh, being on my podcast with me. So where you uh where oh, you where you, where you get your uh where you get your start from? Where where did you go to school and everything? Uh, when I came home, I um I went to this uh spot called One Stop Career Center. Mm-hmm. And um, I did like a test to, like, to see like what would be a good fit for me. Mm-hmm. And because um, I was like, when I came out, I had a job. I was just like breaking down tires for trucks and uh, like changing oil and stuff like that. So almost like a diesel mechanic almost. Okay, okay. So you so you you want you wanted to be a diesel mechanic or or was that just, nah, it was just something that my uncle was uh you know he was the one in charge of like the shop. So he gave me a job and I ended up doing it for like three or four years. Okay. Now so then I decided I was like, you know what? Let me just go drive these damn things. Hey Mike, how how you holding the phone? I'm I'm still hearing you good, but it's like I, I'm assuming the way you're holding the phone is is it's, it's crazy. It's you're sounding good. The you sounding good, but it's still like you still don't don't it sound like he's still jumping in the water, y'all? But I, I I'll get him there. Don't worry about it. I'll get him there. You know what I'm saying? I, when I when I catch it, when I when I catch it, man, I, I'll I, when I catch it, I'll let you know. All right. So all right. All right. Um. Uh, all right, man. So you got into uh, you got into this trucking game. So, who 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 are you uh, who are you driving for right now? Right now, I drive for um, a company called New World Airlines. Okay, see right there. That's when you're going down right there. So whatever you're doing right there, I need you to pick it back up. All right. Is that better? Yeah. There you go. There you go. See, I yeah. T- so I drive for a company called. Uh, New World Van Lines. Uh huh. Out of uh, Chicago. Oh, okay, Chicago, Illinois. How long? How long you been driving with them? I've been with them almost three years now. Three years. How long you been driving all together? Uh, but I got about fifteen years in the number. You say fifteen years? Yes, sir. All right. So you're an OG in the game, man. You're an OG in the game. So right now, the difference between Trucking now versus 15 years ago, what has changed, man? What what has changed in your eyes all the way up until now, the good, the bad, and the ugly? Uh, Well, the good, uh, there's not much good, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, well, when I first started, you know, I started with uh, Warner Enterprise. Right, right. That was and I was with them. That was like that was years. that was the starter company when you was coming into the game. You yeah. chose them as a starter company. Yeah. Oh, okay. What was your experience with them? It was it was okay. Um, I made when 
When I first came into the game, though, I was making twenty six cents a mile. Jeez. You know, making making a thousand dollars a week wasn't even possible. Man, you what well, you you must have been running super duper hard to get a thousand a week at twenty six cents a mile, man. It wasn't even possible, man. Oh, I was it was. Home, on a good week, you were bringing home maybe six seven hundred dollars. Six seven hundred dollars. On a good week. It's kind of, kind of. On had, average, it was like four hundred bucks. Four hundred. Yeah. For and you was doing over the road at that time. Oh yeah. So, so I'm assuming that must have been the I'm I'm assuming that must have been the ugly right there because a lot of a lot yeah. of a lot of people get into this game thinking that they're gonna make all buku kinds of money and then when they get into it and they, they hit with the reality of of uh four, five, three, four, five hundred dollars, you know, it kinda kinda deterred them from not even doing it, man. <laughs> yeah. What's the What's um what's the one thing you wish you known before you even got into the uh trucking game? Okay. Here's one thing I try to tell everybody, especially new people coming into the game. Mm-hmm. Don't follow that sign and bonus. Don't follow the sign there you go. Right there. I, I don't, don't believe the hype. Do. People do not understand how important it is. Not to jump companies. Like your death report is everything. Mm-hmm. You know, you when you you sit here, you go to places like CR England, and you know anybody with these lease purchase programs where they got these brand new trucks, and they they you know they blind see right beautiful truck. See right there, you you went you went out a little bit right there. You went out, but you came yeah, right so, back. You came right back in. All right, go ahead. Yeah, so don't don't go for these brand new trucks. You know, if you're first coming into the game, get your feet wet, learn the industry. Don't chase the stupid numbers for boys. You know, I've seen signs for like fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Like, no, you're not gonna see that fifty thousand. Unless you're putting in five years, ago. you know they spread it out too much. I don't even know why they call it a signing bonus. They should call. They should call it an incentive. Right, because they spread it out. It's not like they're giving you, the, you know, the money when you first sign on and say, "Hey, I'm going to be a driver." Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's frustrating me. That is that that that's very frustrating because when I got into it and the young lady told, well, I didn't I didn't get the sign on bonus when I first came in. I, I got the tuition reimbursement. So when they told me that I was going to get reimbursed my money that I paid for my for my schooling, I'm thinking, OK, I'm going to get that right off the rip. And then next thing I know, my first paycheck, I get nothing. And then I get you know, I, I asked them, I was like, OK, so when am I going to get my reimbursement? Oh, well, we started with you with that one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh oh wow. A a month? Yeah, yeah, one hundred and fifty dollars a month. That's that's going towards your uh tuition reimbursement. I'm like, a hundred and fifty dollars? But what wait yeah, where, to, to yeah, I'm like, where's the where's the love? I, I paid five five thousand plus. I'm I'm thinking Y'all gonna give me that back? <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, definitely that that uh, reimbursement and the uh, sign-on bonus. I, I mentioned that in the I mentioned that before about that. Don't believe the hype. So that so Warner was your uh, first company. Uh, you say you've been with them for about two years. Uh, who you? Uh, how many companies you rocked out with before you came to the company where you at right now? Uh, too many. <laughs> um, Try, trying to get your foot wet. I think at one point I, I had like 15 jobs in the community. All, you know, all, and, all and trucking? Was, all trucking job or all just, trucking. oh, okay, okay, okay. 
um, because that, that that was a big mistake I made, you know, was chasing different companies, wanting to drive newer trucks, mm-hmm. you know, and then just to come to find out, all these companies are the same. Just about. Just about. All these mega carriers are all structured the same way. Just about. You ain't you you telling that's, the that's, you telling the truth. Preach, my brother. That's what I try to tell these new guys coming out. You know, don't be afraid to just stay with one company. Out with them, you know what I mean? Because you're not really you're actually wasting time with losing them by changing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I went from Warner to Schneider, um, Smith Transport. Mm-hmm. That's a funny story behind me. Um, this joke of a company I'm talking about today, Morelli. Okay, yeah, we about to get in. We about to get into that uh, very shortly. Um, I'm trying to think. Who else I've, been with. I've been with Schneider on and off like eight times. Okay, well, yeah. what's your what's your? You said about eight times with Schneider. Yeah. So you. You must have you you must have left on some excellent terms to come back with them eight times. Well, the thing was, my thing is, and the thing I I still hate to do mm-hmm. is home time. Okay. I don't feel if I work two weeks, I only get two days off. Yeah, that sucks. That really does. Because you know, for the most part, I'm sleeping one of them days. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I got kids. It's just like the home time thing, I think, should be structured better. But the, the reason why I was on off with uh, Schneider so long was because every time I took more than two days off, I had to leave my truck at the uh, terminal. And then they assigned it to something like that. I would take like a week off and then come back. But I had to go through the whole process. Yeah, now see that's that's crazy. That is crazy right there because that when I when I was looking into uh Snyder uh when I was doing my research and I asked the young lady about uh can we take the trucks home? She was like uh s- some of them can, but the position that I was interested in, I would have to drop the truck off at the terminal because they do slip seating. And I'm already like well, I stay in Cleveland. I, you know, I stay in Cleveland. I, I, I can't take the truck home. I'm, I'm so used to taking the truck home when, you know, working through uh, U.S. Express. I'm so used to driving, posting up, you know, walk to my house or whatever. And now you tell me I gotta, I, I gotta drive my car to the place, get in the truck, drive for the week, come back, and then drive my car back home. Uh, yeah, that's 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 crazy right there. So uh Snyder was so Snyder was eight times. Uh what's the uh what's the deal with Pharrell? I was with, uh, CR England at one point. Oh, oh my for six months. Oh my god. This what what was your experience with CR England, man? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> CR England. Um, great miles. Mm-hmm. Terrible pay. Terrible pay. All miles. But, I mean, they're miles because they had the pay because they, uh, you know, they updated everybody. Mm-hmm. So they get the, you know, they got the freight, but they don't have enough trailers to cover their freight. They, um, the trucks are governed at 62, I believe. Well, when I was there, it was 62. 62? Yeah, it was terrible. I believe when I made the call to them, uh, I think it was in the second season. Or was it the first? No, I think it was, no, it's first season, I think I called them. No, second. CRST was the first. Um, Second season, I called them up, and I believe they told me it was 62. 
but terrible. but that was but that was about a year about a year year and I mean you know about a couple of years ago when second season was in effect. So it probably might they they probably might change it. I guess I don't know. See, I mean, uh, CR England is also the company that that trains two students at a time too, right? Yeah, the see now they started that when uh, when I was with them. But I refused to be a team. And I was running so many races. So I, you know, me personally, mm -hmm. I made the mistake of going for that beautiful truck. Okay. Okay. So I was neck deep, not making any money. Um, so I took out a personal loan and just paid, paid the truck and took it away. All right, so right there you kind of went mumble a little bit. So let me let me see if I can understand what you just said about that. So uh, you you went for a nicer truck. Uh, you picked up a nicer truck, and instead of trying to paying off paying paying off the lease on that truck, you went and got a loan, and you decided to uh, pay out of the pocket for that truck. So do you still have that truck? I had it for a couple of years. I ended up selling it. Okay, that and that it was uh, that was the truck that you got from CR England, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm surprised CR England let you do that. They they actually let you yeah. they actually let you pay uh pay out right for I mean for that even though you was up under lease. At the time, because it was lease purchase. Uh huh. Um, the I had to get an attorney involved. Basically, I had to threaten the school if they didn't let me buy the truck. Oh, okay. Because they didn't want they didn't want me to. Okay. So once I once I paid the truck off, I took the truck, ran it for a little bit, mm -hmm. and then uh, I ended up selling it because that's when uh, DES first started coming out, and there was a lot of DES problems. Okay. And um, then I just decided to go on the road. So I can't, I can't remember who I was. Okay, okay. So uh, let's uh, let's get into uh, what you uh, what you reached out to me about, man. Let's let's get into it. What's what's the deal with Ferrelli Transportation? Now I made the call to them uh, in the in the uh, twenty nineteen edition of Make the Call. Uh, Ferrelli actually Ferrelli reached out to me back in the day when I was uh when I was transitioning from uh US Express. They they made a they they made a they made a good they made a very good run at me. I mean I, I was almost I, I was almost I was almost there at Ferrelli, but J and R Swoogle came right off the rip and you know they they snatched me up and i decided to go with them so ferrelli man you you mentioned to me that uh they 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 almost bankrupt you what what happened bro well they actually almost destroyed my driving career um basically i was all right you, when you made the call I heard the guy talking about the California trip. They got about five weeks to go mm -hmm. Um So I was out for about a month and a half. I want to say. Okay. Uh, I was always trying to get the California trip because I love running the West Coast. Okay. Um, I was making on average about seven hundred bucks a week. Okay. It wasn't nothing like crazy. Um that uh that whole two cent bonus, safety bonus mm -hmm. every month or something. You you will never do it. I don't care what they say. You, nobody gets it. You say nobody um, would get that, huh? No, nobody gets it. They say on their website that sixty percent of the drivers get it. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. 
So how um, how was how how was the experience? I mean, how was how, how they almost uh, messed you messed your uh, career up? They they try to they try to get you to run lows illegally or something like that. What what they try to do? Well, this is what happened. Okay, so I I took a trip from I think it was Bristol, PA, to um, L.A. All right, where where it you at? Of, where where you at in the position right now? When you talking, I need you to stay right there yeah. in that position. Like this? Yes, yes, like that. All right, cool. I got you. So I went from Bristol PA to LA with a load of um, it was a craft load. Mm-hmm. Um, I went delivered. They reloaded me the produce. It had like four stops. Uh, coming back to uh, damn, I think it was like I think it was like New York. Okay. Um, went and delivered. Then I, you know, I was I went home. I went home on a Monday, and I was coming back out there Friday. Okay. So I was getting my four days on. So the uh, the guy that runs the company, his name is Brad. And he's like the CEO of the company. My dispatcher quit. And he took over. Um, he was a real anal guy. I'm going to say. I'm not, I'm not trying to keep it PG for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, okay. But, you know, he was a donkey. Okay. Um. I go, I, so I go home, I'm thinking, I'm going to be cool, I'm, I'm going to get paid on Friday. So before I uh, come out the house, I like to make sure that my family's good, you know, I go food shopping and pay my bills and do all that. Stuff like that. So Friday come around, now my, now, okay, I have this before, before I get further. I had them deposited in my paycheck on my contact Mm-hmm. Um, I had an issue with my bank with some fraudulent stuff. So for a couple of weeks, I had to switch it over from going to my bank account to my com data. Mm-hmm. So Friday comes around, I go to check my com data account. There's no money on there. Now, I I know I got a big paycheck coming, right? Because I just ran all the miles. Um. So. I call him up and I talk to Brad and Brad's like, he's like, yeah, um, i he's like, I didn't pitch your paycheck on your card because we don't give, we don't give people their paychecks when they're on home time. Wait, 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 wait. They, they, they say what now? They, they don't give you your paycheck while you on home time? They don't. He told me they don't give. The reason why they they didn't give me my paycheck was because I was on home time, and too many people quit and abandon their equipment when they get their paycheck. Wait, hold up. Wait, wait. Back it up, bro. Back it up. Mm-hmm. They wait, man. Hold up. They did not give you. They were supposed to put your check on your Com Data card, right? You 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 opt for the Com Data card instead of instead of a direct deposit. Well, I, I in the middle, of it, I had it switched, but I was already getting it on my Com Data card like the previous three weeks. Okay. So there was no reason why they couldn't load my check on your Com Data card. So wait, so this is your fleet man. This is your fleet manager telling you this, or this is uh, no, this, is, this is somebody from payroll my, my, telling you this. No, this was the CEO of the company who took over dispatching because my dispatcher quit. Because it's a very small company, like the they're like family owned or something like that. It's owned by the Fritzer family. Mm-hmm. And um, he told me basically, he was like, look, 
He was like, look, look, he was like, are you coming out the house? I'm like, yeah, but look, I got to, you know, buy groceries and stuff before I leave the house. I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? My wife don't die. You know what I mean? So I got to go handle what I got to handle and make sure they do it before I hit the road for her. So that was going to be coming up for a month. So he's like, all right, well, I'm, I'm going to give you a load. Why don't you go pick up the load? Because it was like 30 miles from my house. Uh-huh. He's like, once you pick up the load, I'll put your money on the card. I was like, all right, cool. I'm, I went, you know, I'm on the main halfway. I understood that people quit, and he was afraid that, you know, they were gonna, they were afraid for some reason. I was gonna abandon my trust. I don't understand why. Because I, you know, I mean, never gave him a reason to believe that. Okay. So I go pick up this load. It's a load of. It was a load of uh, the, like like the the roll you put in the oven, and um, I go pick it up. Then I shoot over to the uh, truck stop where I park my truck anyway. You know, and I go off duty, and I tell him, "Hey, look, I picked up the load. Can you put my check on the card?" He's like, "Well." Because this load was going to Iowa, from Jersey to Iowa. And he was like, well, I'll put your money on the card when you pass the cover. Okay. I'm like, what? Like, you just told me you were going to give me my money, but now you're telling me you're going to put my money on the card once I pass the I'm like, dude, I got to buy groceries for my house. Right. And then... He's like, all right, well, I'll give you 50 bucks. I'm like, are you serious? So I was like, look, man, I'm not going to play these games, man. Like, you need to get my money for the work I already performed. Right. Like, I'm not moving this stuff until I get my money. So I'm now I'm hooked to a trailer with the load, and this man won't get my money. So I call the... Uh, the nearest way station. And I didn't know really know who to call. And um, they told me I got to go down to uh, the Better Business Bureau. Not the Better Business Bureau, but the, um, like, uh, the Labor Board. And um, dispute it that way. So I, I'm around the corner from my house. I go back to my house that my wife know what's going on. And I'm sitting here going back and forth arguing with this guy on the phone. And he turns around and sends somebody to cover the truck with all my stuff in it. Mm -hmm. So I come back to go get stuff or whatever and find out what's going on. You know, I was about to just say the hell with it. And just start driving. So basically, they took the truck with all my stuff. Then he put, well, because he took the truck and they didn't get my stuff back. Mm-hmm. Then they decided to put on my back report that I uh, abandoned a load of the name of the truck. Mm. So now, anytime I go through a hiring process, that's that's on your I DAT. That's on your DAC report. So yeah, when when the company when the company puts uh puts that that <laughs> that uh that big abandonment on your on your on your thing, and, and you trying to go back and try to get with a different company or something like that, man, is 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 kind of hard. It's kind of actually it's kind of hard to explain it too. You you literally got to like pull teeth to let them know that <laughs> it, 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 that wasn't how it went down. So so Ferelli, right. man, they wow. Uh ah, man, Ferelli, that's woo. This is, this is like I am glad we're doing this right now because I want these people out here that are thinking about going with certain companies Hold on, do for a your due hold, hold on for a second. Do your due diligence. Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Hold on. 
Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's up? What's up? All right, so let me apologize all together. All right. First, I'm about to apologize for the next segment because I lost video. So you won't be seeing me. You'll see me like towards the end of that little segment when I come back in and then you'll see the you'll see me all in my in my glory. But I I also want to honestly apologize for the audio. Yes, the audio. This is one of my earlier interviews and the audio was horrible. I got it. I got to admit the audio is horrible. Um, I, I was debating back and forth whether or not I was going to release the podcast, but hey, it, it, with the good or the bad, I'm just going to have to release it. So I apologize for the audio in this particular podcast right here. So I hope you guys finish enjoying it. Don't hate me don't hate me the the rest the rest of my podcast as you guys see with the great audio it was just unfortunate that uh that the audio on this one wasn't all that hot so let's get back into this uh interview all right go ahead go go ahead you said uh when researching these companies man you say do what now do your due diligence and do your research you know, there's plenty of websites like Glassdoor, Indeed. Go to Google reviews and look at some of these drivers that post stuff about these companies because there's a lot of companies out here that will destroy your deck with you, or at least try. Okay. And um, they actually blocked me because I, I was putting them on blast, like, I've seen a couple of their ads on Facebook. I, you know, and I comment on there. They blocked me from commenting. <laughs> they um, trying to let people know the real. On Google. So they try to make they try to make you out like a, a disgruntled employee or something like that, huh? Right. Wow. And mm. I just want people to know, man. Like this company, and I'm not the only person. When I when I went to go comment on some of that stuff, I've seen other drivers talking about the same exact thing happened to them. It was crazy. Okay. Like, and you know, a lot of people ask the question that they called them, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, you asked the guy Nick uh, this question. You notice how there's Florida mm -hmm. and it's grayed out on the map. Mm hmm. The reason why they can't go to Florida, and if you look it up and you do some history and look it up, the owner of the company was his name was Marty, Marty Fritzler. Okay. They got caught transporting uh, drugs in their trucks out of Florida. They got they got caught transporting what now? They got caught transporting drugs out of the. Out of oh, the drugs, drugs, drugs. Okay, okay, okay. So they're they're being. So that's the reason why they keep it. That's why they, that's the reason why they want to hire out of there. Now I've heard people say, "Oh, well, I see, I see them on the tour of their trucks in Florida." You may have seen them going across ten, like trying to get you know through Florida. Mm-hmm. But the, that's the reason why they can't. They can't go down to Florida and pick up or deliver because they got to put up the drugs. So he lost the company, and uh, I think his daughter took over. Okay. And um, the guy Marty, he actually lived right off of I eighty. Like when you right after you pass the. Um, the Iowa 80 truck stop. Mm -hmm. There's a farm on the left, and there's a big uh, like water tower. It says uh, Fritzer Farms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 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 all their property. Okay, okay. So man, Ferrelli, wow. Uh, <laughs> well, there you guys have it, man. A little bit more, a little bit more in depth detail uh, from a from a former Ferrelli driver, man. Now listen. 
He's, as he said before, he's not a disgruntled driver. He's just want to let you guys know the real, and this is only his experience on uh, on what happened to him at that company, man. So, Ferrelli, was the company that you with now, uh, the company that you're driving for now, uh, is that after Ferrelli? No, no, no. I, um, I was small mom and pop company after Ferrelli. And they only had like like six trucks or whatnot, and, mm-hmm. and uh, then the the schools, they just couldn't you know keep up with everything. Okay. So, so but the- now the the company I'm with now, man. Honestly, dude, I I ain't been happy. I'm making about three grand a week. You say you say you making home. you you making about what you say you're happy now. You you happy with them now? Oh, I love the place I'm at now. Oh, okay. You say you are making about three grand a week. Yeah, that's what I'm taking home. So that's uh, it's, man, three grand a week. That what well, that's wait, that's your take home pay three grand. Yeah, man, come on now, come on now. Come on, yeah, now. Uh, come on now. Right, three, so you a, you, you a, said you, you this is your take home pay three grand. You doing you what what are what are you what are you hauling? I mean, what what are you hauling? Drive in reefer. Where 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 van line? Okay, so, so oh, we're a moving company. Oh, you oh okay okay. There you go. All right, there you go. I I see where the three grand comes in at because uh, <laughs> yeah. I I see where is it coming in at. My man, uh, I don't know if you hip. I don't know if you hip to this YouTuber called uh, the the uh, the My Show, uh, the Asian no, My Show. That. Yeah, I don't know if you hip. He's a he's a a mover. Uh, a van a van line mover and yeah he he's he's making that kind of cheese man you guys you guys moving you guys moving all kind of all kinds of furniture not just not just uh uh residential but you guys be moving like like buildings right yeah well we we uh we do everything from commercial office stuff hospital stuff mm-hmm um, NFL team, mm-hmm. uh, Walmart executives, and stuff like that. So, so, I I I talked to a I talked to a Allied van driver uh, about a year ago. Uh, I wish mm-hmm. I would have did it. I wish I would have did it a little bit in depth with me. But I asked him like, so, the way that you guys get paid, you not only drive the truck. But do you touch the freight as well, or, or like he said, he he hires some people that's in the area. Am I am I right okay. about that? It's, explain how that process right, so goes. The way it works is we basically relocate people. Um, we show them to the house. Normally, it's the driver's responsibility to do inventory and inspection of like people's furniture um and do the paperwork aspect of it but it's a hundred percent the driver's responsibility to set up labor so we have uh, a site on facebook called the uh mover syndicate yeah that's what he said that that's that's that sounds about Sounds about right with what he told me that he goes to. He he goes to that site right there, and you guys ship out. Uh, you you guys would be like, we're coming to this particular area. Who's available, right? Well, we have uh, crew leaders in every city in America, mm-hmm. and multiple. So, I'm not that. so basically, we. Let's say if I was to come to move you out of your house mm-hmm. and your estimated weight is 15,000 pounds and the load, the load is paying me $10,000 to mm-hmm. move you. Mm-hmm. Um, out of that 10,000, the, like, the company takes like their percentage and all that mm-hmm. before they tell you how much you're going to make. 
So if I'm getting paid 10 grand for the load, it's up to me to like break down how much I'm going to spend on loading the load and delivering it. So you and got, then I got to break down my fuel. So you got, so, so you got to, so you got to, you, you got to, you get like a lump sum. Hold on for a second. Hold uh-huh. on. Okay, there you go. All right, I'm back. I'm yeah. back. All right, so you got to so you got to break it so you 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 would get a lump sum for for the load and within that lump sum is how you how you break down everything from the fuel from the people who you're going to pay for loading the truck to the drive right. and to the and to the people that you're going to pay unloading the truck. Hold on right quick. All right, there you go. All right, let me uh, let me let me re-ask that question again. So that's from they 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 give you a lump sum. Uh, they give you a lump sum pay, or you negotiate the the lump sum pay, and then within that pay, you would you will break it down by the people that's loading the truck to you driving the truck. That's the miles and the fuel, and then to the people that's going to unload the truck am i right am i right to say that right so basically like um okay it's very rare that you get one load that fills up the whole trailer um because the way we load these things is like airtight you know we stack furniture on top of furniture and boxes and boxes mm-hmm and um you trying to use every little bit of space as possible in there huh yeah right right because you know that that's where you make your money if you're not a load that you're gonna make a lot of money okay um so basically to fill up one trailer mm-hmm. typically you're gonna fit about three or four houses on them um and if you get three or four houses then each load is paying you just hypothetically if they each load is paying you ten grand, you got forty thousand dollars to budget your fuel right. loading and delivery. Okay. So basically you call your dispatcher mm-hmm. and say, Hey, I need three thousand dollars to get this job done today. Now, a lot of the times you don't need that much money. because um, most of these guys out here they want so let's say I get three guys to come out to the job. They're gonna want about two hundred bucks a day each. Mm-hmm. But sometimes the jobs take two or three, two or three days to complete. Oh, okay. So you got, so you got to look at that. You know what I'm saying? So you're spending eighteen hundred dollars. You know what I mean for three days of work. Right. You know, because each guy is making six hundred bucks. So, um. You know, they're all, prof- well, most of them out here are professionals. Mm-hmm. You will run into occasional guys who don't know what they're doing. But that's why, like, when people when people look at the van line guys and they see these real big sneakers and stuff like that, because you, you, you average about, I want to say anywhere from 300000 to 500000 a year, mm-hmm. if you know what you're doing. Okay. Okay. So that's a lot of money in that so, business. Okay. So how long? It's a lot of money in it, but the, there's a lot of lot of a lot of work. You got you got to work for it. You got to work for it. So that's what's up, right, man. Right. Because I'm not I'm not one of them guys that just going to hire people to do that. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm getting my hands dirty. I'm I'm lifting you know 300 pound dressers and carrying them out. Having down like a step, you know, running a thousand boxes out to the truck, you know, stuff like because you got to pack all that stuff too. Okay. So, 
it's not just a driving job. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. Then sometimes a lot of guys, a lot of guys just don't understand that you know when people be saying that they be making this kind of money, this big money, like this money that that my man Mike is making. Three three grand a week? That ain't bad. Like I said, I was surprised, and I had to have him to break it down like he did. You got to work for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to work for it. You're not gonna you're not gonna get into this game expecting to make that kind of money without you not putting in the work. Period. You know what I'm saying? Without not with you coming in thinking all I'm just gonna do is drive today, and you're gonna make that kind of money. Maybe. Maybe, okay, maybe, uh, okay, maybe, possibly, but on a on a real, uh, he you gotta work. You gotta work. You gotta work. Well, all right, Mike, man. And I also also want to add to that though. It's not just about what I just explained. You gotta understand too. You're driving a tractor trailer mm-hmm. in residential areas. Oh yeah, and those particular if you guys seen those type of trucks, those trucks ain't small. <laughs> those trucks ain't small and they be going up some tight, tight areas. I, I'm assuming you yep. be you 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 be finagling them turns, man. <laughs> and oh, yeah. and those trailers, those those trailers, the assholes is set. They're they're not they're not uh they're split assholes, right? They're no, they're regular tandems. They're just set in one position. <laughs> All right, yeah. So, there's no sliding tandem to help you. But um, you still got to get weighed, though, right? I mean, you still got to go through the weigh station. You still got to get, you still got to get weighed and everything. What, what that? Is there any exceptions? It's, it's still a fifty-three foot trailer, mm-hmm. but you don't. Only time you gotta use the connect field is when you um you gotta ask like before you before you do the job you gotta get a scale and then after the job you get a scale so that way you can determine how much weight you actually fit on the truck. Okay. Because that will affect your um your line haul pay. Okay. Okay. So if it doesn't weigh a certain amount. And it's like, it's like a lot of these estimates nowadays are binding. Mm-hmm. So that basically means they pay one price, whether it goes over or not. And um, a lot of times these estimates aren't even aren't even close to what this. Is. Okay. Okay. So. All right, Mike, man. What? Well, hey, yo, man. I appreciate you coming on, uh, giving your experience, especially with Ferrelli, man. That's <laughs> that's a wild story and uh and your experience with your uh present company and letting guys know how uh how real it is with the moving on the moving side man so i really do appreciate you coming in um Absolutely. so since you're on your 34 man you you got a load you got a load out that's uh that's going to take you somewhere where where's the next place you're going to man I'm going back to Chicago. Back to Chicago. That's what's up. All right, bro, man. Well, hey, I want to send a shout out to you, man. Thank you for reaching out to me, uh, taking this time Thank to you. chop it up with me, man. I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys for for staying. I know I know, I went over the clock a little bit, but, hey, I mean, the story that he was telling about Ferrelli was, was, was really good. It was really good. We we still had the problems with the audio, and I want to apologize for that. <laughs> but hey, so Mike, man, thank you very much for uh, joining me. I really do appreciate it. And uh, you you stay safe out there, bro. Stay safe. Yeah, you too, bro. All right, man. All right, give me a minute. Check one, two. All right, I am back. Thank you very much for joining me with for another Lockout Men podcast. Again, I want to tell you guys that if you want to holler at me, if you want to get on the podcast, reach out to a brother. You know what I'm saying? If you got some experience that you want to share, reach out to me. You can get at me at lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. 
And you can hit me up in the Instagram, in the DM, up under my lockout man name. Of course, that's how you will get at me, all right? So if you guys want to come on the podcast and, and chop it up, feel free to chop it up with me. The invitation is open to everybody. So reach out to a brother, you know what I'm saying? If you like content like this and more, just hit the like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell on the way out the door. This is Lockout Man. I will come back at you guys with another video. And like I said before, for this particular video right here, I do apologize for the audio. But of course, going forward, the audio will be the audio will always be better. Thank you very much, and I'll holler at you in another video. Peace.